You and I have an insatiable appetite for electricity. Come with me and we'll look at the issues relative to wind farms and the communities that they serve. This is The Wind Farm Guy. Meeting on WCMY, Bill Bernadoni, Jay Lasour, along with UK Group Representative Dennis Stout. Dennis, thanks for the time. How are you? I am doing great. Thank you for allowing me to be here. And you've got the most unique business card I think I've seen in a long time. <laughs> Wind farm guy. You yes, beat sir. me to it. Yes, sir. You beat me to um, it, Jay. So that, nobody has to say, what do you do for a living? That, that's right. <laughs> well, I've been doing wind for 16 years now. And I get asked a lot of questions by landowners and 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 landowners for for their answers. Where where do people go today for answers? The internet and the internet is full of all all sorts of baloney. And so several years ago, I started a, a video series addressing the different questions that people ask. And that's what the windfarmguy.com is. It, it's just a way of and getting real. Uh, good answers out there for, for people. And that's what that is. <laughs> okay, so let's get into this project. What is this project and what's... We had a story recently on 1430WCMY.com about what's next and the next steps that you guys are getting ready for with this project. So let's talk about this project. What is it? Where is it going to be? And what is next? Okay, the Hickory Wind Project is an 80 megawatt uh, wind project uh, for here in LaSalle County. And it is south of Peru, south of uh, Cedar Point and Tonic area. Okay. And um, it is uh, we are we're pretty much finished with the uh, the land acquisition phase, and now we are um, we'll be wrapping that up, and then we're heading into the permitting phase and doing the, the various studies that, that you have to do, you know, avian studies and aviation studies and all, all the all the important things that we need to do to make sure that it's it's a, a good project. And um, we, and so after we put out that uh, press release, we got word back that uh, we had a, uh, we finally got our, our uh, study back from uh, the PGM grid. And so we, we have our full-blown uh, inter, interconnect agreement in place. Or we'll, we're, I think the last thing to do is a couple of signatures, but it, it's, mm -hmm. it's pretty much done. So 80 megawatts is yeah. how much? How many... How many wind? Uh, what's the what's the term for each of those wind turbines? How many how many different turbines are we going to see out there? Well, these these produce uh, well. Wind turbines have come a long way. They used to be very small, and they they generate more and more. And these what we're looking at putting in are in in the neighborhood of five five maybe six megawatts in 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 that area a, a piece, and that's called the nameplate capacity. And what that means is that's if they were running at 100%, that's how much they would generate in one hour. That's that's what that number actually means. And um, and, and so if you uh, divide 80 by uh, that number, that tells you how many turbines we're going to mm -hmm. need. And so that's we're we're talking uh, between uh, 15 and 20 turbines. Okay. So it's a, it's a small project, but it's a good project. It'll be great for the the community. And the, the property tax money, right? Or, yes. or uh, is oh. that where these figures come from? Yeah. Your your uh, piece says uh, 20 million plus. Right in, in new income to LaSalle County on various and levels. Absolutely. Any taxing entity will get their piece of the pie. So whether it's county or township or schools or uh, whoever the, the taxing entities are, um, the, they, they'll get their piece of the pie. Plus, even folks that aren't uh, uh, going to be getting pieces of the pie, we're making contributions. We made a contribution to the Tonic Fire Department. Uh, we made a contribution to the uh, Cedar Point fire department. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, we did more than making a contribution. We bought, some, bought them, them some things. We bought uh, some radios for Cedar Point and some uh, imaging equipment for Tonic and fire department. Okay, okay. So what happens as this is fairly new, somewhat new. Mm -hmm. um, actually, before I get to that, let's ask this. How big are these turbines getting? They're a lot bigger, a lot taller than they used to be. Is that correct? They, they are. And that... that the, they're they're generating more electricity in um, multiple ways. Okay. One is uh, the, they're taller because the a further away you get from the ground, the greater the energy is in the wind, um, and that's because of the, the friction with the ground. You know, we may not see it or realize it, but the ground slows the wind down, and the further away you get from it, the the faster and more energy is in the wind. And then uh, also the, uh, the rotors, are the blades are longer, which makes the rotor bigger, which gives them more torque. And so they can, they can turn a bigger generator. 
and so those two things combined allow these to be um, uh, generate more electricity. Okay. So what happens after the after they get de decertified after they're removed? What happens to the turbines then? Because I know there's been a lot of questions about that. What happens then, or is that still something that's kind of being worked on? Uh, yeah, both. Okay. It, it is uh, obviously th this is going to be in place for for fifty years. Mm -hmm. At the end of that, uh, we'll we'll be, ac according to the agreements with the landowners and such, we'll remove the everything all our above above ground improvements, take the the parts, re reuse ones that we can, and uh, repurpose them, and then uh, you know destroy the rest of them. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, it, it's. It, that's just uh, part part of uh, what we do. And in fact, that's one of the studies that we're, we will be doing is okay. the decommissioning. Okay. 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 And, okay. And, and along with uh, uh, height or elevation, I suppose you need to be pretty close to some some high voltage lines, do you right. not? That right. you can then feed it into. Right. And, and and that is one of the one of the uh, key things we have to when we when we locate a place for a wind farm. There, you're right. There has to be some uh, not only a transmission line nearby, but there has to be available capacity on that line. And uh, we will be tying into the ComEd line, which is uh, part of uh, uh, the PJM grid, and uh, that's just north of of Cedar Point is where we'll be tying in. And uh, and uh, you mentioned those towers. Uh, I mean, they have a red light, so they're obviously mm -hmm. an aviation risk because it's got to be mm -hmm. higher than mm -hmm. 200 feet or whatever the limit is. But when that blade does hit uh, the peak, mm -hmm. it's 300 some feet uh, up off the ground, is it not? Uh, it's I mean, it's uh, it's yeah, it's, it's the, quite a ways the, up. The there. towers are 200 some feet. Just well, it depends on which turbine we get, and we haven't made the turbine selection yet, so uh -huh. I, I can't really say. But uh, yeah, they're they're pretty they're pretty tall. Uh, but that the the good side to that is because they're taller and they're generating more electricity, is we can put fewer of them out there. So we've got and more efficiency then. Well, and and farmers are are dodging fewer items. Uh -huh. You know, instead of mm -hmm. having two or three items in their field, they have one, if that. And so it's actually good for the farm. It's good for the farmers in multiple ways. There was a study by uh, U of I that uh, they determined that uh, wind turbines actually improve the yield of, of corn and soybeans. That's where uh, I was going to go next. Just slightly, but it, it is a slight improvement. That's from U of I. I would never imagine that. <laughs> I, I'm not a scientist. I can't explain why, but that's, that's what their studies show. Is, that's where I was going to go next mm -hmm. is in regards to farming with the, the turbines in, in the field and the impact that that has had. Uh, what are you hearing from from the landowners, from those who are farming it in in other developments, and how they're and how they're seeing the impact that it's having for them, for farmers? Right. Well, it, I've I've worked on a bajillion projects through mm -hmm. the year, and you always mm -hmm. have you know people that are very much in for it and people mm -hmm. that are against it, and so on. That's just human nature. Um, and so we're running into that very same thing here. For the most part, uh, everyone, people are uh, agreeable. They like the idea. They like what it's going to bring to the community um, to answer that question what what you should do and I did this not long ago I drove up to Pawpaw and I asked people that had had turbines in their backyard or whatever mm -hmm. for the last decade and, and I asked them those questions you know what what is it, how does it bother you how does it affect your farming and they it, it doesn't really affect them so the people that are having concerns now down here it, it's it's kind of speculation you know, you know how we are. We, we, we worry about things, and most of the things we worry about never come to pass. And, and that's, that's kind of where, where things are here. And so I encourage if someone has some concerns, talk to somebody that has a turbine on their ground or near them or something like that. Well, over the past decade, maybe a little more, uh, you'll see all of a sudden a little tower pop up in a farm field, mm -hmm. and it looks like a broadcasting tower or something for a radio station, but it, it's got wind vanes and anemometers and things on it. So that's a tool you initially bring in to work a site? Right. That, that is, it's called a MET mast and has uh, meteorological instruments on it, weather vane, anemometer, thermometer, I mean, all of the, everything you would expect. Mm -hmm. And um, it... Uh, uh, it, it, sorry about that. It, it measures uh, 
the wind measures the, the, the different atmospheric conditions, and we use that data to, um, we already have data, wind data for the whole project, and we use that data to confirm what we already know, and from that we're able to extrapolate uh, mathematically what the wind is like at different elevations and at different locations in, in the project. Good information, wonderful information. How can folks uh, get in touch if folks want to learn more about this project? What's a place for them to go? And go to uh, hickory-wind.com. Hickory-wind.com. Correct. Dennis Stout with UKA Group on uh, the Hickory Wind Farm development uh, here in LaSalle County. Dennis, thanks so much for the time. Uh, thank you. And let me ask you, yeah. before we let you go here, windfarmguy.com, that's, <laughs> yes, that's another place to go to maybe? Just to, uh, absolutely. That, as an well, educational tool for a lot of folks? It won't have things specific to hickory wind, uh -huh. but it will have, you know, if you wonder why do why are turbines laid out in this way or why are they why do they spin the direction they do or why the why are there only three blades uh, you know a lot of the you know what's going to happen during construction mm -hmm. yeah you can go there and i've got uh, 90 something videos out there wow now. very wow. interesting so i cover a broad uh, spectrum of, of topics there dennis thanks so much for coming yeah. in and, and answering some questions really appreciate it and thank you thank you for watching working together we can make good energy decisions and save our planet i am the wind farm guy